Hey y'all, just wanted to do a little quick video here. Had a bunch of questions on the garage, so wanted to do kind of like a frequently asked questions FAQ sort of thing. How much did it cost? How long did it take? Who built it? What's your favorite flavor jelly bean, etc. We'll start with the basics. It's a 30 by 30 pole building that we put up here to be basically a two car garage. I based my decisions for this off of the garage at my old house, which was a stick built garage. It was 24 by 26. I decided I want something a little bit bigger. The 30 by 30 fit the space I had and the budget I had. I decided it would fit my needs and give me the best bang for the buck in terms of square footage and ceiling height and things that really mattered to me. So first one I always get is who built the garage. I don't really want to name the company. If you go back to some of my earlier videos, you can probably figure out who it was. They're from up in Pennsylvania, Dutch country, but I didn't have the best experience, so I don't really want to endorse them. I'm also not going to tell you to not use them. Uh, I'd say just do your own research. Uh, your mileage may vary. They subcontract basically everything uh, from the construction to the site work to uh, depending on what options you get. If you do gutters, if you do a floor through them, everything's contracted out. So again, your mileage may vary. Do your own research. Don't ask me who built mine. How long did it take to build? Well, the building itself went up in three days. Uh, there's not really much to a pole barn. Really, it's set the poles, string the girders, trusses, and cover this, the walls. So the building itself went up in three days. It was pretty quick. The whole process though took me almost two years start to finish. That We went under contract with the company in May of 2019. We didn't get permits until September of 2019. And then the company wasn't ready to break ground until December of 2019. So that really stretched out the timeline just to get the building started. Then once the building was up, uh, it took me a while to finish the site work. I wanted to have a local contractor that I was familiar with do the concrete, and I wanted to spread it out. So basically I was paying cash for it and doing it at my own pace and my own budget. I didn't get the concrete done until March of 2020 and didn't get my final occupancy permit until May of 2020. So really from start to finish for me took one year. Depending on how you go about doing it, it could be quicker. I'm not sure what their lead times are like these days. But a friend of mine had gotten a similar building built and he told me it took him a year from start to finish. I laughed at him. And then lo and behold, it took me exactly a year to finish my building from start to finish. So depending on your locality and how fast things go, you might have more luck. One of the questions I get a lot is how many vehicles will fit in here? Five. The answer is five. Five if they are somewhat small, stacked on top of each other. I have way too many projects going on right now and way too much stuff crammed in here and nowhere near enough time to actually do all this and keep everything clean but yeah five vehicles cobra t-bucket side by side valiant magnum all crammed into 30 foot by 30 foot pole barn 900 square feet five cars it worked for a little while just to get through what I needed to, but in general, it's meant to be a two car garage. That's how I arch architected it with two roll up doors, two bays. I will say that it is not only a 30 by 30 building, but really the usable space is less than that. The way the building's constructed with the poles and the way the doors are set in, it really makes the building a little shorter, or a little bit narrower. It's more of a 29 by 29 usable space. And that also depends on how you finish it out. You could end up eating up some of that space between the poles as well. So just be aware that even though it's a 30 by 30 building, it's really not 30 feet by 30 feet of usable space, even though the county taxes me on 900 square feet. The big one that everybody always asks about is how much did it cost? So I'm gonna break that down with what I paid starting this building in 2019. Obviously we're now two years later, COVID has since happened. Lumber prices, material prices have fluctuated wildly. As of the last time I checked, which was a couple months ago, this particular company's prices were about 33% higher. So for me, my building was $19,100. That was my contract with the company. They did that in the form of a $5,600 deposit, $12,500 balance that was due when the materials arrived and the remaining $1,000 when the building was done. Not sure why they broke it out that way. So that same building today, based on that cost increase, would be approximately $25,400. So that's pretty significant. Uh, I'm glad I got mine done when I did. Uh, still $25,000 for this amount of square footage isn't bad. 
My goal was to be between 25 and 30K done. So let's go through the rest of the expenses. It was 19,100 for the building. Uh, I spent about $600 for the initial site work on the property. Uh, we took down a bunch of trees ourselves. I had a friend of a friend come in with a skid steer and prep the site. And then thanks to our county, anything over 600 square feet requires a soil sample. And so that cost me $600 for a local engineering company to come out, drill three holes in the ground. In my case, we had moderate shrink and swell. So we had to go a little bit bigger on the footings, which was annoying. Uh, add a little bit more cost that we hadn't really anticipated and was kind of surprising for a pole building that already had the footings going four feet into the ground, but that was their requirement. So we're kind of stuck with that. And the other big expense I had was the concrete. So I spent $6,000 for our concrete floor. And here again, your prices will vary depending on who you have to do the work and what your requirements are for a slab. I wanted a slab that was at least five inches thick, was reinforced with rebar and would support the weight of our lift. So uh, what I ended up with is a five inch thick slab, 4,000 PSI concrete, rebar on a two foot grid, and a two foot apron on the front of the garage as well. So that took our building up to about $25,000 for the building and the slab. That doesn't include permit costs, the site work, or anything you do afterwards to finish it, such as electricity, insulation, and so forth. We have electricity in here, obviously, there's no insulation, the walls aren't finished yet, uh, but it's a workspace and that's lower on my priority list. So for right now, I'm in the garage for a little over $25,000. And that's all I really have. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer as best as I can. Like I said, check out our other videos if you haven't already. There's a time lapse of the building going up. There's a couple walk arounds before and after it was built. So hopefully they'll fill in some holes for you and help you decide you know, what, what you wanna build on your own lot, how much it's gonna cost you, how hard it's gonna be. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I feel like I'm addressing the nation here. My fellow Americans. No. This is going to take a long time to get through this.